nice welcome bringing you a general reading for the collective for the new moon in Aries. Um, before I get started, and this reading is going to take a bit, but um, it is time stamped, so just know that you can pop straight ahead to the oracle or the tarot if you so choose. But for those of you who have been kind of keeping up with me and have come into the comments in the past week or so, um, or not come into the comments, but sent me um, healing wishes and healing vibes and healing prayers. Thank you so much. I just wanted to take a moment because um, I haven't been super available in the comments. I've done the best I could, but it's been a brutal week health-wise. So Monday, late Monday, I kind of had a breakthrough in the pain. So lucky for Pisces, they <laughs> got a better version of, of yours truly. Um, if I was cranky with anyone, please accept my apologies. I just, you know, when you're in pain, um, tolerance levels are real low. So um, many, many thanks. Each and every one of you, it, it, did, not, it did not get by me. Um, I really appreciate it because it was kind of rough. I'm not out of the woods. Um, Thursday, I do have a procedure. So if you do not see me for a little while, for a little while, uh, please know that I'm in good hands and I'm going to be fine. But I may not be able to concentrate. And I don't like to read when I, you know, can't concentrate. So in the event that you miss me for a couple of days, you know how it, you could be of service is um, go into one of the playlists for one of the signs that you like to watch and see if there's anything you missed and watch it because the only way I can keep this channel afloat is to have views. And in tarot, unfortunately, there's a pattern where people just wait for their sign, they watch it once and then they're gone and the videos don't have any longevity. So that is one way you could help me is just over the, you know, one once a day each day, if I'm not here, pick a video, watch it, let it play in the background while you're washing the dishes or whatever, and that will keep the, the channel sort of afloat. Um, so I would appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so now I want to talk about the new moon in Aries. Um, in most of the readings, I, I feel like I've mentioned that because it's we, we, we're in Aries season, which is the start of a new astrological year, um, this is the first new moon of that year. So we're closing out the past two lunar cycles, which were pretty brutal if you, you know, if it was for you, it was for me and most of the world. Um, this is like the first new lunar cycle of the new astrological year and really good energy is accompanying it. Yay. So I'm going to talk about it. The first thing is that Aries is all about the self. So this is the I am energy that we're in right now. If you're here as an Aries sun, happy solar return. Um, it is all about the self. And when we get to the full moon in Libra coming up, that will, will be back to self and the other in relationship, right? But this reading, this moon is all about us. Um, so, and I've got my notes here, so I'm looking at it. So it's Im important that we focus on the self at the start of this new astrological year to kind of get ourselves right. You know what I'm saying? Make sure we're in alignment with our path and sort of reset after all the insanity that has come for the past few months. So I do want to mention what's really important is this new moon um, will be at the same degree in Aries as Chiron. And Chiron is the wounded healer right? It's, it's pretty much an asteroid, but um, it's got a lot of planetary habits and patterns. Um, it's considered one of the other rulers of Virgo too, by the way. But because this new moon is going to touch the same point as Chiron, some of us may have some wounds triggered. Just FYI. While others of us may experience the healed perspective um, as we set intentions for our future. And the only way to determine is it depends on how much work you've done in the past few difficult months, saying since the end of November, right? Right around Thanksgiving all the way till now. If you've been doing some inner work, if you've been really trying to examine yourself and get introspective and do some deep dives, 
then you may come through it with a very healed perspective for your future. If you did not do that work or if the, um, the wounds weren't given any opportunity because of your outer experience to heal, for some of you that's the case, then this may be a very triggering new moon. So FYI. Um, yeah, the last three to four months, please let me give you a trip down memory lane, not that you need it. We had the whole Mar we had the whole Venus and Mercury retrograde, both meeting up with Pluto. Then we <laughs> had Mars jumping in, holding hands with Venus. Then they moved, met up with Pluto. And wherever Pluto is, right? Deep dives, shadow work, harsh, harsh realities occur between Mars, our decision-making energy, the masculine principle, Venus, the feelings energy, the feminine principle, Mercury, our thoughts and perceptions all being dragged through the mud in reverse by Pluto. That's what we've been through. That's what we've come through. Um, so I'm sort of, you know, trying to let you know that that's in the past as are the past two lunar cycles, and this is all new energy, but if you feel triggered in any way, take copious notes about it. Journal your face off about it, because that's what you're gonna need to make come to terms with in the early part, uh, you know, the Aries uh, into Taurus and into um, Gemini, okay? So I just wanted to let you know that. Now, we have, um, I'm trying to bring in Neptune and Jupiter. So, so what's happening here is we've got Neptune in Pisces. That's the sign that Neptune rules. So it's comfortable there. Neptune is our connection to the divine. It's um, love of the divine. It is our spiritual sense. It's our spiritual awakening our spiritual um, anchoring in this human body. We've got Jupiter in Pisces and they're getting, they're getting ready to sort of meet up on the 12th. They're gonna be conjunct on the 12th but they're, of April, but they're close enough now. And of course, Jupiter is the planet of expansion and good fortune and travel and um, a broadening of the mind and horizons. Think of the wheel of fortune great energy from Jupiter. So on the 12th, they'll meet up. But for this new moon in Aries, they are close enough together that they are both making, they are both touching the nodes of the moon, right? The north and south node of the moon. Um, and it's really lovely because the geometry is such that it, it will feel very floaty, like we're almost cruising into the future with this high level spiritual energy and all the abundance and expansion and good fortune of Jupiter there to, you know, to prop us up and hand us into our future with the Taurus North, North Node. So really lovely energy. Um, so what's good about that is the intentions that we set for this new moon uh, sort of weave right into where we wanna head in the future. And we've got the planetary support there, personal planets and their connection to those nodes to do so. So take advantage of that in a good way. Um, Neptune will be the spiritual guide for that. Jupiter will bring us the good luck charm energy. That's, that's a really lovely thought. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> We still have Mars, Venus, and now Saturn in Aquarius, okay? And unfortunately, they are squaring the nodes of the moon. And a square is a hard angle, right? It's like where the wall meets the floor. It, it doesn't budge. And so all I can say about it, and I've checked in with a few different astrologers, is that Mars being our decision-making apparatus and Venus being our deep feeling apparatus 
and Saturn being the Lord of Karma and have you learned your freaking lessons planet. Um, squaring the nodes of the moon is basically saying your decisions and your feelings about the decisions you're making count. This one's going to count. This is going in your permanent record. <laughs> that's exactly how it feels to me. So I just wanted to let you know that that's the only blip there that I wasn't going to mention, but it feels too powerful to not mention, especially for those of you that may be triggered by this new moon um, due to some unhealed wounds. Okay, so that's that. Moving on to the Oracle. I pulled from, um, oh God, I'm still a little off people. <laughs> Moonology Oracle cards. Okay, so from the Moonology deck, uh, I got the new moon in Sagittarius, the full moon in Cancer, and the new moon in Aquarius. And here's the message. First card out is, um, and I, I, I really didn't pull it with, you know, position A, B, or C like I normally do. I asked Spirit, like, what's going on for this new moon? What do we need to know? And how do we need to proceed? First card out. Luck is on your side. Right? New moon in Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter. So the message here is that whatever kind of happens next will be some sort of a gift, even if it simply just expands your present situation. So what's coming next is the gift for all that we've been through, all that we've worked through for the past three to four months. Yay. Second card, a personal issue reaches resolution, right? So the challenges of the past couple lunar cycles and all the retrograde energy finally come to an end or are healed in some personally meaningful way. So for those of you who still have some wound issue around it, resolution may come. For those of you who have got a lot of healing already under your belt, you're going to make some personal meaning out of it and check the box, done. Then we have the new moon in Aquarius, bring love into the situation. So as we move forward here with our own personal agendas in Aries energy, right? New moon in Aries is about you. Um, do so with love in your heart and good intentions for others. Let go of the past with love, ease and grace and do not look back. That's it. I love it. Bring love into it for all. Wish everybody the highest and best and move forward. Don't look back. How about some tarot, guys? This tarot is going to be just for you. So forever, for whoever is here, uh, I do realize we've got a lot of twin flame collective energy in, in this little happy tribe of ours. Um, others of you are, you know, looking for new love, um, in consideration of old loves. So whatever comes through, comes through, but I'm focusing more on who is here watching and what the message of this new moon is for you personally. Seven of Pentacles. So we're starting here with this energy of potential, planted seeds, right? Pentacles, 3D, goals. You plant a seed for something you would like to see grow and evolve, but it takes time. And you've heard me say it a million times, the day we plant the seed is not the day the garden grows. So that's where we're starting. What's crossing us here is the Knight of Wands. Ah. Yes, yeah, so um, Knight of Wands could be about the energy you've been waiting for someone to return, correct? And that presents a challenge. Planted the seeds of it probably many moons ago, no pun intended. And, you know, for a return, a passionate return, flow, that fire, 
you know, warmth and passion energy to come to come in is um, something that's still kind of unfolding organically. Underneath we have the Empress. There is the beautiful divine feminine. So this is through all the harshness of the past couple lunar cycles, as well as the past Mars, I mean, Venus, Mercury, a retrograde season with Mars and Pluto in the mix. You know, underneath, we've been, sort of been working through the divine feminine energy. Doesn't matter if you are a male or a female. It's been about really getting close to um, the unconditional aspects of who you know, of love that we have in our in our core self. So this is unconditional love within. In the past, the Hierophant, for some of you, this is representing your spiritual awakening or awakening to how you want something to reflect more of who you are at your core, right? And I, I'm saying the whole who you are at your core and the core thing and the core of this because that's what Aries is about. Um, and I'm feeling, you know, it's like the I am. I am and then fill in the blank and that's the, who you are at your core. So the Hierophant is also a card of commitment. It can also be about guidance, wise counsel. We'll see what that brings to you um, on the clarifiers. So in our conscious awareness now, we've got the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is talking to me about those of you who, um, well, I'm gonna, two versions. Those of you who still may have some raw wounds right? There's some pain here, some inability to think about much else. Trust me, in a physical sense, I know what you're talking about. Uh, because like, you know, whenever you have a physical pain, it's localized, right? But you still can't think about anything else but that one pain. Well, when you're in emotional pain, spiritual pain, even, um, it sort of floods the whole body. And you really can't think about anything else. Um, for those of you that are more healed, have done more healing, this Nine of Swords may be an acute awareness of how fragile, right? Like we're just getting out of the recuperation phase and we're taking our first steps and we're not quite at 100% yet. So there's this fragility, this sort of, um, cat on a hot tin roof, this startle response because um, the healing is so fresh and the wounds are still probably even visible, like the scars are still seen. So that's how I'm perceiving the Nine of Swords for this reading. <laughs> oh my gosh, going forward, near future, King of Wands. So uh, this may, because we've got this Seven of Pentacles with the Knight of Wands, we are now seeing a king who knows what they want, who hopefully has done their work, who's jumping into that leadership role in their own life and claiming what they want. Message from Spirit, Page of Swords. Uh, maybe more information needed. Maybe something that you need to scope out here. Hidden energy, beautiful, six of wands. Six of wands to me is reconciliation. It's making peace. Um, it's, you know, uh, coming back together to the point at the very minimum where each party is heard and feels satisfied with the outcome, right? It may not be the outcome you desire totally, but it leaves you feeling um, heard, your energy received, your concerns addressed. See where I'm going here? Really nice energy. Uh, <laughs> in your hopes and or fears, the devil. Sure, because for, for all of us, this nine of swords is like, yeah, I've healed from it or I'm still in the process of healing from it, but I do not trust the situation. I'm still fragile here. Um, so the devil would be maybe a little bit of um, fear, uh, some shadow, some concerns about the other person and, you know, what repeating patterns may, you know, like snakes in the grass, you don't want 
to kind of go back out into the yard and s step right in the nest. So I kind of feel like that's part of the cat on the hot tin roof energy coming through. Lovely. But your outcome going forward, guys, Ace of Cups. Look at that beautiful dove of peace. Your cup runneth over. This is love of your life energy, a divine gift of abundance of the heart and soul. What's on the bottom? Two of swords. So uh, that being said, there may be, you may be of two minds about your situation. You may have decisions to make for yourself, Aries new moon, about how you want your future to unfold for yourself. I'm going to say that word a lot. Um, so let's take a look at it, shall we? Hmm. Well, we've got, um, got the nine of wands, the ace of cups again, and the death card underneath. Sorry. And what I'm seeing here is um, an energy of even though you've planted the seeds for this return and therefore it still needs time to grow um, underground, like the, you know, the foundation, the roots of, of your garden aren't going to just appear. When we see that first little bud come above ground, there's a whole big root network underneath. Um, and I feel like you haven't given up on the love you desire, on this potential love of a lifetime. But the death card underneath suggests that on some level, um, you're holding in, the, in your unconscious awareness uh, a realization that something may need to come to an end. And, or that something is coming to an end, or that something needs to be forever changed, transformed. So probably one of those three. The Empress in your unconscious awareness. It's a new deck, guys. It's a little slippy. Two of Swords, which we have over here. Six of Wands again. No, five, six, seven of Wands. I'm sorry. And the Hanged Man. Seven of Wands. Empress. Two of Swords, Seven of Wands, and the Hanged Man. So I'm looking at you, uh, a divine feminine energy, again, regardless of gender, in this Two of Swords of Two Minds or needing clarity around a decision. And I feel like on some level, this Seven of Wands is your inner constitution right here. So even though it's a seven, it's, I just love seeing that solitary flame with the glow behind it because it suggests to me that you're very concerned on an internal level with what's going on in your outside world. And the hanged man underneath is almost as if you're saying, I'm going to wait for the enlightenment. I'm going to wait for the enlightenment. It's a little bat there. So I kind of feel like... There's an awareness that things are on hold or moving slowly, if at all, Seven of Pentacles, Hanged Man. Um, and it's buying you time to get clear, right? It's the crossroads moment, that Two of Swords out twice. It's buying you time to get clear on how you're going to move forward in the future. This new moon in Aries is like the new moon of, of a new year. It's, it's essentially that. So your intentions aren't just for this next lunar cycle. It's for the whole year ahead. So I'm feeling as if you're kind of toughening your inner resolve with that seven of wands. You're understanding that you may, you know, need to kind of surrender to it, hanged man. Observe the 30,000 foot view. See the bigger picture, hanged man. Um, as you make your decision, 
as you take in the information needed to get the clarity to make a decision. All for how you're moving forward is how I'm seeing it. Hierophant in the recent past. I shouldn't even say recent because I mean like I don't think for some of you four months is not recent for me it is um, but so the past however long Hierophant we have the five of pentacles oh my gosh right we have the six of cups and we have the Hierophant again so we've got a double hit of the Hierophant so that's talking to me about a commitment that may have been abandoned. Five of Pentacles, and then we have the Six of Cups. A broken commitment with the past life soulmate. Right, Five of Pentacles is often abandonment, um, being ghosted, being left out in the cold. Um, certainly an energy that leaves you feeling devalued, uh, unwanted, underappreciated. And because we have the six of cups right there, it is in essence talking about our sacred connections. The hierophant here, um, is wisdom, is that wise counsel, is operating from our higher selves and who we truly are at our core. So I have a feeling this experience here, Five of Pentacles, Six of Cups, transformed a lot of us by stripping away all the external stuff and leaving us to face our bare selves. So, I know, it's really emotional. So that's why the Nine of Swords, fragile, still in pain. Still worried, coming through on the other side and trying to continue to process. <laughs> Devil, don't you know it? Um, Son of Wands is the Knight of Wands again and uh, the Seven of Pentacles again. So for many of you, the worry is that whoever it is on your mind is just going to come back and repeat the old patterns of the past. This is the devil card here, and this is the um, son of wands, which are the knights, uh, landing on this nine of swords. That's this sort of Thing that's running on a loop in your mind and the seven of pentacles underneath it's just like it's taking forever and it's not something that can be forced and therefore it breeds all that anxiety and worry but i really feel this devil energy is is representative of part of the karmic nature of our connections i mean we're every relationship listen clearly Every relationship has a karmic nature to it. Karma is actually our friend. It lets us know when we're on the right path or when we're veering off the path, right? There's positive karma, good karma. There's negative karma. I feel like we're all sitting here worried about the negative karma replaying itself, right? Knight of Wands coming back in, repeating the same toxic karmic patterns of the past. In the near future, King of Wands. Ah, magician. Six of Wands. Nine of Cups. Wow. You are calling this... Um, you're manifesting this reconciliation with the king but but you're manifesting their own determination that this is what they want to that they want the reconciliation too this is the same card so uh, i'm really just and that would be a wish fulfilled nine of cups 
That would bring an emotional balance. That would leave you feeling um, like you're on, you know, on some steady ground here. So I do feel that magician is your energy and that you're kind of manifesting this reconciliation. So let's look at the Page of Swords, a message from Spirit. Ace of Swords. Uh, three of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles. Hmm. So Spirit's saying there's information you need and we're going to send it to you. Right? Page of Swords is always looking for information. I like to refer to the Page of Swords as the little spire detective of the tarot. And it's not very emotionally oriented. It's really just information seeking. So you can liken it to scrolling someone's social media feeds or checking in with people you know in common or, you know, just ferreting out information. And Spirit's here with the Ace of Swords. Yeah, we're going to give you all the clarity you need because Two of Swords here, Two of Swords here, we know you're looking for information to quiet your mind. And we will provide that. Followed by the Three of Pentacles. And the Three of Pentacles to me is foundational. It's you, your divine counterpart, and spirit coming together to agree to co-create, to agree to, it's cooperative, working on this connection from the ground level up. And it, there's friendship in the Three of Pentacles too. So it's like you're, you're a, a, in agreement in a, in a um, collegial way, in a, you know, I'll, I, I'm losing the words now. I'm just losing the words. But it's more than just friendship. It's like the basis of the relationship is friendship. And now you're gonna get the information you need to determine if you can come together with the help of spirit, Ace of Swords, thank you very much, to take the connection to higher levels. Are you gonna get the buy-in? Spirit says, I'm gonna give you that information or am I gonna be on my own? Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is the lovely lady in the garden and you know all the creature comforts in her silk gown and her robes and but she's the single person of the tarot so i feel spirit saying i know you want to know where things stand are they in or am i on my own and we're going to give it to you ace of swords lovely hidden energies hello six of wands reconciliation a triumphant homecoming glory victory Ah, oh, Page of Pentacles, first steps, the star, yes, and King of Wands again. Wow, check out this card, King of Wands, a coiled up python there. Cobra, I'm sorry, Cobra, is that a Cobra with a lightning bolt? Damn. Okay, so in the hidden energies, what's going on behind the scenes that you might not be aware of is someone is preparing to take their first steps in a new direction toward reconciliation. This will provide healing. This will be the miracle. This is the Jupiter. I know it's not, I know it's not a Jupiter card. I understand the stars, Aquarius and all of that. But that sense of a miracle, right? That sense of expansion and good fortune is what I'm feeling coming from this particular star in this placement with the, from the King of Wands. So I feel it's the King of Wands. Um, taking first steps in the direction of coming in for reconciliation to, you know, provide some healing. It will feel unexpected and surprising like a miracle that the star often re uh, represents. I feel it's coming more from Jupiter, uh, but it's really nice energy going on behind the scenes. And here you're sitting in your hopes and or fears <laughs> with said snake cannot make this crap up with the snake of the King of Wands wrapped around your neck. There it is. Yeah, I'm feeling better. <laughs> I would not have got that yesterday or the day before. 
Whoo, my goodness. I love doing this, by the way. All right, Devil Tower, Hopes into or Fears. Um, Knight of Pentacles and Knight of Cups. All right, so you want the Knight of Cups. That's what's floating around in your unconscious awareness, in your psyche. Like, I really want this person to be open with their emotions, <coughs> you know, prepared to wear them on their sleeve, come from the heart, make offers from the heart, just like you want a Knight of Cups. That's your hope, and it's buried. What's coming from the top of the deck? Devil, Tower, Knight of Pentacles. It's going to take forever <laughs> for me to find out if I'm going to get the love and emotional connection and romance of my Knight of Cups, or am I going to get dragged down and blown up again by the devil with the tower? And it's going to be a long, slow, painful collapse. So we're leading with fear here, guys. And I feel it's coming from the nine of swords and the devil with the page with the, I'm sorry, the knight of wands. And here we've got the knight of pentacles, right? So it's like ripping the bandaid off one hair at a time. But what you really want is, you know, what you're really hoping for is that they, um, if they return, should they return, that they do so from an open heart with an open heart and with emotions to share. Okay. I see the fear. I get it. Cause like the last four months have been nightmarish for the vast majority of us. Um, remember here, we, we're going to have a personal issue reach resolution, which I love because we got the six of wands out twice. Um, but we also have to bring love into the situation. So uh, I would try to flip this energy around if I, if I were you, um, and I am, we're all one, um, I'd be focusing my intentions on reaching down deep for the love and being that emotionally available being that you hope to receive because you need to be a vibrational match for it. So if your vibration is devil tower, devil tower is what you will get. If your emotional vibration is knight of cups, you have a better chance of attracting to you that same energy. And if they don't show up, they're not in the energy at this time, at the very least at this time. So let's look at the ace of cups in your outcome. Wow, chariot, full steam ahead, strength, overcoming all the obstacles, and 10 of wands, perfect, offloading all the negative karma, release of the burden, the struggle is over. Holy crap, Bola. Ace of cups, chariot, strength, 10 of wands underneath. Remember what I said, put it in the rear view mirror and don't look back. Um, I feel like you're heading in a beautiful new direction. Uh, success, victory, triumph with the love of your life and a lot of blessings, good blessings, good fortune from Jupiter, spiritual connection from Neptune. Um, the strength is both of you helping each other overcome the obstacles of the past and offloading it and leaving it, checking it out the door. Don't look back. Bring it to the curb. I used to say that with the Ten of Wands, right? Uh, Marie Kondo, that shit. That's what I feel I see here. Everything from the past is going out to the curb. It does not inspire joy. Let it go. Intense reading, I know. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you all the energies that showed up. Um, and then there is a link below for the extended. I will go all around the Zodiac, Aries through Pisces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one card for, your, for you, representing what you need to work on for the next year. One card for your divine counterpart, regardless of their sign, what they need to work on for the next year. And then how that may impact, like what may, what may happen in your connection as a result. So those are the three card spreads that I'll do for each sign. So it'll be Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aries through Pisces for your Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
plenty of opportunities between you and your divine counterpart to receive messages that may help you set intentions for the year ahead. Okay, so we have here, uh, who do we have here? Knight of Wands is out twice. That is Sagittarian energy. Death card is Scorpio. We've got the Empress is Taurus and Libra. Hanged Man is Pisces. Hierophant is out twice. That's Taurus. Uh, Devil is out twice. That's Capricorn. King of Wands is out twice. That is Aries, Leo, Sag. Magician is uh, Virgo and Gemini. That's actually part of Mercury. We have um, Star is Aquarius. Tower is Aries. Chariot is Cancerian energy and strength card is Leo. Lots of fire energy coming in and water. Uh, the link to the extended is below. I hope to see you there. New moon and Aries blessings to all. Much love and appreciation for your care and concern. And I'll see you over um, in the extended or in a future reading. Bye for now.